Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying this journey that we've been on. And I encourage you to start from the beginning of this video uh, devotional series if you haven't already seen the first two. Now you can find them on our Faith Assembly Facebook page um, and as well as on our YouTube channel if you're wanting to go back and watch those videos. Uh, so we've talked the past couple of weeks on some practical application of our worship and how we can begin to create a lifestyle of worship in our lives and in our everyday lives. I challenged you though uh, over the past couple of videos to start with one day uh, in, in, those, in that practical application and to start in your own home. Now I want you to build on those though and I challenge you to continue it. Yes, we start with one day and we start in our own home, but we can't stop there. Like we've said multiple times throughout this uh, series, this is a journey and we're working towards a lifestyle of worship. What that means is that it will become a part of our everyday life and in every area of our life. So today I want to talk about something that I think is applicable to each and every one of us. And what that is, is I want to talk about obedience in our worship. Now we're all familiar uh, with the scripture that says obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, but I want to talk briefly about the context of the story that we find this verse in. You know, oftentimes I'm guilty of it too as Christians. We, we have these famous verses uh, and we, we quote them left and right and we apply them to <laughs> all kinds of areas, uh, but sometimes we forget to look at the context of what the uh, the original verse was in. So I want to look at the context of the scripture. Um, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, we read about how King Saul is told to destroy the Amalekites and all their belongings. Well, Saul goes out and he destroys, and he's told this by the Lord, and he goes out and he destroys the Amalekites, but he spares their king and he spares all of the best of their sheep, of their cattle, their belongings, and he takes the best back with him. And he pretty much kept everything that was beneficial to him and destroyed the rest. Now, when Samuel approaches Saul about this, Saul begins to reason that he brought these things back to sacrifice them to the Lord, saying, you know what, no, no, I brought, I did, I destroyed the Amalekites, but I saved the best for the Lord to bring them back and sacrifice them as, as a burnt offering to him. Now, out of context, it would seem scriptural to do what he did, you know, offering God the best. That's what we want to do, right? And in fact, that was the practice of sacrifice in those days, that you offered the lamb without blemish the best. But the problem here is that Saul disobeyed God. Now, whether Saul really brought them back to sacrifice to God or not, uh, or whether that was just as an excuse to try to get out of the jam he was in, it doesn't really say there in scripture, but I think we can assume based on his actions and his attitude in, in this scripture that it was more than likely for his own benefit, not particularly to sacrifice to God. But nonetheless, this is the context that we find uh, in this scripture where, where it comes to this point and Samuel replies and asks this question, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as obeying in the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Now, sacrifice and burnt offerings was how they worshiped in the Old Covenant. So he wasn't necessarily wrong for the thought of offering the sacrifice. It was that he placed sacrifice in higher regard and higher priority than obedience. So you might be thinking to yourself, Trey, I get what you're saying. You've explained the context of this and, and how this verse fits in the context of that story, but how does this apply to us? You know, it's not like, we're commanded to go out and destroy a group of people and we're disobeying the Lord. What I want us to understand and what I want us to realize in this and from this passage is the importance of obedience in our worship. Now, how many of you have ever been in a church service uh, and in a worship experience and just didn't feel like engaging? You know, maybe you had a lot on your mind, maybe you're tired, Maybe there's things at home that are tough right now. You know, it really could be anything going on in life, but you just don't feel like it. And if, if you're like me, we've all been there. In fact, sometimes we even go through seasons where we just don't feel it. You know, we're, we're, we see everything going on around us. Worship is happening. Music, maybe it's music, maybe it's in our own lives, like, but we just don't feel it. And it's in those times, oftentimes, that we, we tell ourselves that because of how I feel right now, or don't feel, that if I were to be outward in my worship, if I were to jump around, lift my hands, shout, dance, whatever it may be, if I were to do that right now, it would just be fake because I'm in no way feeling spiritual or in tune with God right now. However, 
I believe that that right there is a lie from the enemy. Because I would pose to you that it's not being fake, it's being obedient. Now think about this. In Psalms chapter 98, verse 4, it says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. In Psalms chapter 47, verse 1, it says, O oh, clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with a voice of joy. And also in Psalms chapter 150, verse 4, it says, Praise Him with the timbrel and with dancing. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and with pipe. In each of these verses, it's given us commands to sing, to shout, to dance for joy. Um, all of these outward expressions of worship. And it tells us this all throughout the Bible, and especially in the Psalms, different ways to outwardly worship and express our praise to God. It's telling us to be outward. It's telling us to be vocal about our worship and our praise of the Father. So, you know, in those moments when maybe we're not feeling it, maybe we, we just are feeling about as spiritual as if we were sitting on the couch eating potato chips watching a, a, a TV show, it's in those moments that if we choose to worship God without reservation, we're not being fake or we're not just doing it for show. What we're actually doing is we're being obedient because the scripture tells us to do these things. The scripture tells us to be outward in our worship. I want you to imagine something with me real quick. Um, that the first Sunday that we're all back together here uh, at the church, uh, worshiping God together, that everyone in attendance chooses to worship God with this mindset, with this context, that no matter what any of us feel like, that we respond to God out of obedience, not caring what people think about us, not caring what we look like, but to, to look at scripture and to see what God has asked us to do and the worship that God has asked us to give him and that we worship in that context and with that response. I mean, think about it. If we had a room full of Christians shouting, dancing, crying out to God, pouring themselves out to God, bowing before him, man, can you imagine the kind of worship that we can give God collectively together? See, God isn't looking for a church who worships in obedience. He's not looking for a church who just worships out of our feelings or worships when the music is just right. He wants us to be obedient in our worship. So here's this week's challenge. As you're sitting in your living room at home, or maybe in your bedroom or, or in your car, wherever it may be that you're watching this Easter Sunday, to worship in obedience. I challenge you to get up, get out of your seat, now, unless you're in the car, don't do that. But if you're at your home, get up, dance for God, shout, lift your hands, be outward in your worship, be obedient in your worship. Let's use this time that we have now, even though we can't meet together, let's use this time while we are apart to get used to worshiping God in this way so that when we get back together, and here's the second part of this challenge, that when we get back together, we will be prepared to worship collectively in obedience and create an atmosphere of praise for a God who deserves it. I look forward to that day, not only because we will be back together, but because I'm believing that our worship is going to be so much more meaningful to our Savior because we are worshiping Him in obedience, not based on what we feel or don't feel. I want to pray over you guys today as we end this, uh, end this devotional that, that God will just show you and help you and teach you how, and me as well, how we can worship in obedience throughout our everyday lives and when we get back together collectively. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are to us. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you. God, thank you that you broke down the barriers and tore the veil, God, that kept us from you, God, and that we can, we can now boldly approach your throne, God. We can worship you with everything that we have, God. Lord, I pray that in this season, Lord, you would begin to teach us what it is to worship you in obedience. God, let us go to the next level in worship in, in you, God. We thank you for the opportunity. God, I pray a prayer of blessing over every single person watching this video, God. Lord, that you would just help them during this time. God, be the comfort, be the peace, be whatever it is that is needed in each and every one uh, of, of their lives, Lord. And I pray that you would just help us to go to uh, the next level in you. God, thank you for this opportunity uh, to worship you. We uh, bless your name. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Be on the lookout next week for the next uh, part in this series. I hope you have a wonderful day.